Yes. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the regular open meeting of the Suez Town Council, Monday, July the 15th, 2019, at 2 p.m. in Council Chambers. So first off would be the adoption of some minutes, the Committee of the Whole Minutes of July the 2nd, the regular open minutes of July the 2nd, and the special open minutes of July the 2nd. Could we please have a motion to adopt those? Thank you. Councillor Rhodes, Councillor Bennett, all in favor. Thank you. Business arising from prior minutes, there is none. Introduction of late items. Nothing? Okay, could we please, oh, is this where we have to change? So we would like a resolution, please, to deal with the bylaws um, first before the water matters. Could we have a resolution? Thank you. Councillor Rhodes, Councillor King, all in favor. Thank you. And now we need an adoption of the agenda as amended. Councillor King, Councillor Bennett, all in favor. Thank you. Um, no delegations, so we will move right into correspondence. I don't see anything there. And we will go into bylaws, and that would be uh, zoning amendment bylaw. Ms. McKay. Um, thank you, Mayor McCordoff. So the purpose of this report is to request that Council consider adoption of zoning amendment bylaw number 1085.120, and it's attached to your report. The amending bylaw, if adopted, would allow for site-specific cannabis production facility to be located at 11201 115th Street. The applicant is proposing to sell the subject property to prospective purchaser in order to establish, in order to allow them to establish um, a cannabis operation that is a production facility on the subject property. The property is currently zoned M1 General Industrial. Section 4.8 of the zoning bylaw provides an opportunity for council to consider site-specific rezoning proposals to allow for the production of cannabis. At the time that Section 4.8 was added to the zoning bylaw, the production of cannabis was limited to mer medical marijuana. As such, the town and zoning bylaw reflects that terminology. As part of this proposed rezoning and in recognition that recreational cannabis production is now legal, can staff have recommended that sections 4.7, pardon me, and 4.8 be amended by replacing the term medical marijuana with cannabis operation. So this uh, attached zoning amendment bylaw um, includes language to amend those sections of the zoning bylaw. With respect to the subject property, it was previously used as an electric motor repair facility uh, that is the home of Asus Rewinds. The proponents are proposing to use the existing building for the production facility, and all production must take place within the building. The building and the uses within the building are required to comply with all provincial and federal regulations, and that also has to do with um, any regulations related to air, the air quality or filtration systems. So uh, with respect to the zoning bylaw, as noted previously, um, Section 4.8 of the current OCP, uh, zoning bylaw provides an opportunity for Council to consider rezoning applications for the proposed use on a case-by-case -case basis. With respect to the OCP, a diverse uh, economy is a cornerstone of a sustainable, resilient community as identified in the OCP. Development of this property as a cannabis production facility <clears throat> allows for a new business to establish, provides a new employment opportunity in our community. So a public hearing was held on June 17th. No members of the public spoke and no correspondence was received in relation to the current rezoning proposal. The applicant for the proposed business did speak and informed council of the business's need to comply with all provincial and federal regulations. So the rationale for this recommendation is that staff have no concern with the proposed use on this property and are also recommending support for the proposed rezoning. Implications are as follows. For the community, the community had a chance to comment on cannabis grower operations in 2016 when medical marijuana operations were added as a discretionary use to the zoning bylaw with site-specific zoning. Uh, and also a public hearing was held in June of this year, which provided additional opportunity for public comment and input. Council granted third reading to the amending bylaw on July 2nd. There are no impacts to the budget associated with this report. No significant state dates at this time. A building permit may be required in the future, but we do not anticipate a development permit being required. Um, a town policy for an economic 
economically sustainable at Sears includes encouraging a variety of businesses and production facilities to locate in our community. The options before Council today are Option 1, Council resolves to adopt the amending zoning bylaw. Option 2, Council rejects the zoning bylaw amendment. Or Option 3, Council recommends any other action deemed appropriate. And staff are <coughs> recommending option number one at this time. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Thank you very much, Ms. McKay. Anybody? Councillor Rhodes. Uh, thank you, Mayor McCordoff. I'll move the stock, staff recommended option number one. Thank you. Is there a seconder for that? Thank you. Councillor Bennett. Would anyone like to speak to this issue? We've been through this a number of times and uh, um, and as recently as our last meeting. So I think this has uh, probably been hashed out a fair amount. Uh, seeing no one uh, wishes to speak, I will ask for um, the adoption, or I'll ask for the question. All in favor of this motion? Against. <coughs> Thank you very much. That's Concludes done. my time with you right now. <laughs> wow, that was the shortest time at council. Well, we'll expect to see you back. I will be back. Okay. Thank I you. I just have some stuff ongoing that I need to tend to. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. So we are now going to go back to the um, to the two water matters um, issues, and we'll deal with um, number one first. And that would be to report on expenditures from accounts payable for water councillors and water and council approval. Um, and that would be water district cash requirements to July the 15th are in the amount of $36,065.73. You move that, option number one. Okay, is there a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Rhodes. <coughs> All in favor? Thank you. And the next is Ms. Van Vienen, the Water District Service. Thank you. On July 2nd, 2019, staff brought a report to council regarding the disqualification of a water councillor and options available to council with regard to the service of water in the rural area other than through an order in council, which is how it has been provided since 1989. Council passed the following resolution, that staff be directed to send a letter to the RDOS asking them to consider creating a service area for water district users and further that if the RDOS is in agreement that staff approach the province with a request to amend Order in Council 1870 as it relates to the Town of Osseus to eliminate Osseus's need to continue with water councillors and instead permit the Town to offer the water district services through an extraterritorial agreement with the RDOS. A letter was forwarded to the RDOS on July 3, 2019, requesting that the board consider consenting to an extraterritorial service area for the Osseous Rural Water District, formerly referred to as Systems 8 and 9. A letter was also forwarded to the Director of Local Government Structure with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs, requesting consideration of this option, amendment of Order in Council 1870 as it relates to the Town of Osseous, and asking for special consideration for the filling of the wa vacant water councillor role. The special consideration requested for water councillor is that the minister permit the town to either delay a by-election for the water councillor position while the extraterritorial service is being established and the OIC is amended, or alternatively, that the minister appoint a person to sit as water councillor for the interim. The ministry contra contacted staff today and advised that a by-election is still necessary. Therefore, a, a report will come to the next regular meeting of August the 19th to appoint a chief and deputy chief election officer with a proposed date of November 2nd as a general voting day. Staff are present, uh, currently presenting a bylaw which would establish a service area for the Osiris Rural Water District. Section 13 of the Community Charter allows the town to provide a service to a rural area as long as consent is received by the other local government or regional board. Osseous Rural Water District Service Authorization Bylaw Number 1353-2019 establishes the service area, allows the town to set user fees for water service through bylaw, and bill the individual properties and residential units that receive water through this area. All properties are bound by the Osseous Water District Regulations Bylaw, and any property that wishes to connect to our service and is not in the current area must get consent from the RDOS before the town considers their request. 
Council is being requested to give first and second reading to this bylaw, after which it will be considered by the RDOS Board for consent. If this is received, the bylaw will be sent at second reading to the Ministry for consideration of our request to amend OIC 1870. If approved, the steps will be provided to Council in a further report, including the extraterritorial service agreement between the Town and the RDOS for consideration. Implications to the community, continuation of water service to the rural water district, organizationally continued dis discussions with the province and RDOS and required documentation, no budget implications, significant dates, the RDOS board is meeting on July 19th and will be considering this request. If this bylaw does not receive the first and second reading at this meeting, it will be delayed until the August 19th meeting or a special meeting will have to be held. Sustainability continuing to be the purveyor of water to rural water districts 8 and 9. Options 1, that Oceus Rural Water District Service Authorization Bylaw Number 1353-2019 be read a first and second time. 2, that it be sent back to staff for further review. And 3, that it be abandoned. And staff recommend Option 1. This is the first step in showing the province the town's interest in providing this service through extratorial service agreement rather than ordering council and the RDOS consenting to the service being provided in Area A by the town. Thank you very much. Council, anybody like to make a, a motion on this? Councillor Rhodes. Thank you, Mayor McCord. I'll follow, move uh, staff recommended option number one. Thank you. Have we got a seconder? Yes, Thank sir. you. Councillor King. Anybody wish to speak to this? All right. I will ask for a vote. All in favor of this? against thank you um, thank you very much and uh, I will be at the regional district meeting on the 19th and I will monitor this and speak to it um, next we have we'll get through this quickly aren't we uh, this would be the general net payroll and Sun Bowl arena financial accounts to report on expenditures from accounts payable for council approval and payroll information for council to receive. So the general cash requirements of $213,364.02 and the Sun Bowl cash requirements of $9,821.70 would be adopted by consensus. Net payroll accounts of $98,645.49 is received for information. And the next item is the summary of building permits. What did you leave? Your glasses? Your keys. So um, it's, uh, there are several um, things being added to people's homes, garages, single family dwelling, um, fire suppression, uh, and so on. To the, the total for the month is, um, is 2,338,000 and total to date is 12,739,000. And year to date last year at this time was seven million, so practically double. That's pretty amazing. Um, it's nice to um, to see that there are lots of people uh, building and um, and and doing um, some construction during this good weather. Anybody want to say anything about these? No. No. Okay, so this is a good month. Could we please have the um, the building report um, received? Thank you. That would be Councillor King, Councillor Rhodes. All in favor? Thank you. There are no committee meetings, so uh, Mr. Romanko, do you have a CAO report? I do. <coughs> okay. So a few of the activities of the administration uh, over the last couple of weeks and some of their plans, uh, starting first, in community services, uh, the first family splash day scheduled, uh, is scheduled for Wednesday, July 17th. The Sun Bowl <laughs> Arena is open today, so if you want to cool off do <laughs> some public skating, it's available. And so we are working with a supplier to uh, install the, uh, the handicap lift at the Sun Bowl Arena. 
and we're planning to uh, paint the weight room over the next uh, couple of weeks. In terms of corporate services, uh, H, uh, they're working on policy manuals, individual policy manuals for staff. Also, several HR issues are being worked on, and the work uh, continues on the water district uh, operating model. So they're reviewing by-election uh, process and making preliminary timelines uh, for the by-election. The director and bylaw officers, as well as staff from departments, uh, attended the Sharps Awareness and Naloxon Training uh, provided by Tom Co Todd Coons, uh, uh, community paramedic. This session was very well received and very educational and what to watch for when cleaning our parks and washrooms. In terms of finance, 93% of our taxes have been paid, which is about normal for this particular time of the year. And five properties are in potential tax sale that staff are working to resolve. In terms of public works, uh, there's a bunch of uh, maintenance going on in our wastewater system, including uh, mainline flushing and pump station cleaning. Also, um, um, lots of tree trimming and removal and dead uh, tree removal uh, throughout town. The Splash Park uh, pad was, was washed, and also a new uh, deep uh, can garbage was installed at uh, Gyra Park Banshell. Uh, there's been a manual raking of the Cottonwood Beach with, uh, uh, to remove the uh, uh, milfoil that uh, flows into shore because we can't get our beach cleaner in there. And of course, our beach cleaner is only doing limited capacity uh, at this point in time. So uh, we continue to work on capital <coughs> items uh, uh, in around the uh, wastewater pump station and also trying to pick a color scheme for, them, for the sewer lift main. Myself, uh, I was involved in the interview process for the operations director, the orientation of the new fire chief, continue work on the boundary expansion and Con uh, Conconi property negotiation projects, and also the uh, ministerial uh, meeting request for UBCM. And that's my report for today. Thank you. And did you announce who had, uh, who was? No. Oh, we're not doing that. No. Okay, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> um, it, that will be done in a be done press in release. release. Okay, good. Thank you very much. And um, I'd just like to say before we do this that this is Mr. Romanko's last um, uh, CAO uh, report because uh, when we have our next meeting, um, which will be in the middle of August, um, Mr. Manko will be retired. So um, we we always appreciate getting an up to date on uh, on everything, uh, Barry, and um, and we thank you for your your great reports that uh, that give us all the information we need, and it's always kind of nice to hear all the things that are going on in town. So thank you very much. We will miss your reports. Um, <clears throat> so council reports. Um, who's first? Councillor Bennett. Uh, just one, <coughs> quick, one quick report on municipal insurance association meetings. <clears throat> I attended Whistler. It was a retreat and basically did a lot of stuff like board diversification and I find out how they appoint people and they try to balance male, female, different nationalities, uh, so many people from elected officials, so many from <coughs> appointed by the regional boards and uh, try to diversify. <coughs> also, we're going to be looking at a new CAO position, so we went through mm. a similar thing that we did here uh, at different levels. And <coughs> the, the property insurance program is, going to be, is now offered, of course, to all the uh, municipalities before strictly liability. So it, what it does, it makes more stable rates for communities because of the way they they look after the insurance so that's pretty well it uh, thank you and uh before i go on i did not did i did we not receive the cao's report did i forget to do that and i'm i'm sorry i need a motion to receive the cao's report okay councillor Rhodes, councillor bennett all in favor thank you i'm sorry i forgot that <coughs> um next councillor harvey yeah i have nothing to report <coughs> Okay, Councillor Rhodes. Thank you, Madam Cordoff. Uh, likewise, I don't have much to report either, but just uh, kind of echoing uh, Madam Cordoff's comments. Uh, Barry, thank you very much for everything you've done since 2008. Uh, in Southern California at Knott's Berry Farm, there's a roller coaster there, and it is the wildest, craziest thing in the world. 
and your job is like sitting in the front seat of that roller coaster all the time. I don't know how you did it, uh, but thank you very much. It's been an honor and a privilege for me to work with you with, throughout these years, and you know we just accomplished so much. And uh, thank you very much for everything you've done. Um, <clears throat> Councillor King. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I guess I would echo the mayor and Councillor Rhodes, but I want to say personally, Barry, uh, working with you has been a pleasure, and to understand the amount of work <coughs> that's on your plate, I really don't know how you do it all, but again, thanks very much for what you've given to this town, and hopefully we'll look forward to getting you involved somewhere down the road. I'd also really like to thank uh, the Committee for Music in the Park. For people that live here on a Friday night, if they're looking for something to do and it's free, please go down to Gyro Park at 630 because there's great entertainment. And thank you. And there was um, 660 people there last week, which um, is pretty amazing. It's almost, that's that's two out of the three that have had that that type of, um, of uh, uh, people show up. So I had a couple of things. One, I was at the, um, the CAO and I were at the Desert Center opening last week where um, they were, the Desert Center personnel and volunteers were thanking uh, people, several businesses and the town of course, the resort municipality funding for providing money for the, um, the new uh, trailer that's there. It's in much better shape than the last one was, which had a sagging roof and mold and everything else. So it was very nice to um, to be there and uh, to have all of the partners who'd contributed money be recognized. Um, I was while I was there, I I was talking to Bob Sherwood, who I think many of you know, great volunteer in this town, Bob and Deb, and Bob was so excited because he had just won first prize at the Kelowna Apple Triathlon for um, 70 to 75 year olds and um, and so they do a 750 meter swim an 18.6 kilometer bike ride and a five kilometer run and he won this and is planning I think to attend the Cana be on the he thinks he'll be on the Canadian team to go somewhere for next year so he was just really excited about this, and it was so nice to talk to him. And, and so congratulations, Bob. And that's with no nap between the events, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was at a meeting on, on Friday morning in Penticton with several other um, health-related uh, uh, people plus um, municipal directors, and on a PCN, Primary Care Network, uh, it was a follow-up meeting that none of us were able to go to before, but I thought I'd better go to this one. Very interesting um, about all of the things that, um, that they're looking at. The Primary Care Network is, is something that is, is, is looking, it's really a team-based approach to healthcare rather than just having a primary care doctor only. It's um, having everybody on board to help. And they're, uh, Penticton and Summerland were first to get this organized. And um, they do have one, uh, that a, a clinic that is being um, opened up in Penticton fairly soon. And they have uh, hopefully four to six doctors in there plus three staff and Division of Family Practice is going to hold the lease on that. So that's a little different um, uh, than what, you know, it's been used to. But they are, and it's just really, primary care network is just family physicians. That's their focus. It's not on specialists because several people had asked about that. Um, it, it, it was interesting to listen to because, as somebody said, when you've seen one small town, you've seen one small town because every single municipality and area is slightly different. So you can't use this model to work through everybody, every small town. So I, I feel um, that looking at um, what they're trying to do in, in helping solve some of the healthcare problems in the South Okanagan is a really good thing. It takes communication, and that's one of the other things we were we were talking about. 
um, EMR, um, electronic management um, uh, regulations and how you can, um, you could go into a hospital or go into a care center and uh, the doctor would be able to call up all of your tests and so on on the computer because each office and each computer talks to one another and we're not there yet um, but that's that's probably something that will be a bit of a push and also different health authorities so we're in interior health down here they have different ways of funding things um, say northern health has a different way of funding it than Fraser health or interior health so um, we've kind of decided to meet again this group in about another month and hopefully look at ways that other health authorities deal with things and what works and what doesn't. So it's an ongoing issue, that's for sure. Um, and um, the, the sort of the next thing which kind of got me started on, on thinking about things today is single-use plastics. And um, there's been quite a lot in the news lately about single-use plastics. Uh, there, I know that at UBCM this year, we're going to hear a lot of communities and, and perhaps local associations talk about how we can um, recycle better, reuse better, reu um, you know, reduce, that kind of thing. To me, the more I think about it and the more I read about it, I really think that rather than just saying let's recycle, I think we're far better off to reduce and reuse as much as possible. Because I, I think it was, was it on 60 minutes or 48 hours or whatever the Canadian one is, they were looking at all of the plastics that are sitting there put together in bundles and how what are you going to do with them? It's very difficult to even get rid of them once you've got them all. So my thinking is cut down. You shouldn't, you know, we don't need to have huge plastic or containers of, of uh, recyclables and, and plastics if you can reuse and reduce on them. So apparently the big four in terms of single-use plastics are water bottles, plastic straws, single-use plastic bags, and coffee cups. So um, I really think that there are many places in this town, uh, many stores and businesses have really started to look at these issues and cut down on them. Lots of them don't offer straws anymore. And um, where was it? I was, oh, I know. I was at a restaurant the other day, and instead of uh, taking what was left over in a, you know, in a carton or something, they gave a reusable container that you could actually put in your dishwasher and, and, um, and reuse again. So I thought, we're starting to think about doing things a little bit more sensibly. And I think that we're going to hear a lot more about this. I know that Victoria wanted to ban single-use plastics, uh, I think it was just the plastic bags, the other day, and it was turned down by the powers that be. So there's a lot more in dealing with this, um, but I think we're kind of on the right track, and certainly our kids, um, the ones that come and speak to us at council meetings um, on occasion, are probably more engaged in this than we are. So we all need to work together to reduce and reuse rather than just recycle. So that's my rant for the day. <laughs> um, so thank you everybody um, for, for attending this short meeting. We do have two public hearings, but they do not start till four o'clock. So could we have a motion please to adjourn? Councillor King, Councillor Bennett, all in favor. Thank you.